Hey everybody, welcome back. Today we're gonna to go through the pre-config settings for the Analog Wave Zenith. So let's jump right in. Hey everybody, welcome back. Today in this video, we're going to be diving deep into the Zenith. Uh, this is video two. This is all about our settings. Uh, most of this is gonna be our pre-config settings. Okay, if we go back to our main screen, our, our couple of inputs are still there. Those don't matter as much. We're gonna go into the pre-config and we're gonna start at the very top. And as always, our system pre-config, I never change anything. I, I just don't, like it's, I don't know, standard sounds good to me. Um, but let's go through these real quick. Genlock, we can designate, uh, there's a genlock in the back of the box. You can send it genlock. Uh, I don't have that. You can set internal reference, color processing, HDCP. Again, I never touch any of these. All right. This is, if you're going to do something weird and special, this is your screen. In the Aqualon, this is split into two different um, menus, one for screens, one for auxiliary screens. It's all into one on this box. As we said in the last video, all of your, your main screens are going to be regular. Your last screen will have to be configured as an auxiliary screen. And then it's also, so the regular screens are all on top. The aux screen is on bottom. A couple things to note. We have these outputs that we can grab and move and chuck and hither and yar. And below that, we have uh, live layers that we can do the same thing with. One of the things about this system is you can reconfigure it however you want. Nothing goes into effect till you hit the apply button in the bottom right hand corner. And if something's wrong, it'll give you an error. For instance, I wanna take all of screen two's reference uh, resources and chuck them into screen one. Actually, I didn't even have to hit apply. It's telling me that's not a good configuration. That will show there until I complete the setup. If I take and outputs resources, I have to turn off that output. Let's take the output and let's shelve it. The moment I shelve it and turn it all the way off, then the apply button is clickable saying, you have done things that we as a system know we're gonna work, please continue. So hit apply. I now no longer have a screen two. I have a screen one with two layer resources, screen three with one layer resource, and an auxiliary screen output four. I'm gonna set all that back. Canvas. Canvas is something that they came up with on the Aqualon series. This is more to do with LED walls. Essentially what you're saying is, I wanna make a big canvas or a smaller canvas. Maybe you're doing a 16 by nine. Actually, that's not even, let's say you're doing a 21 by nine ultra wide LED wall because that's what the client wants. You don't want to fill up the entire output, even though you may be using it as a 4k. So you have the pixel space to do that. You want to change your outputs. Now, all of these have to be done with pre-made presets. You have a pretty long list. When we get down to the formats, we can make custom ones of these. I'm already jumping around. I'm trying not to, I'm trying to go top to bottom, but side note, you kind of can't, it's not built to go top to bottom. There's a lot of jumping around that you have to do. But we're gonna do this video top to bottom, I promise. My ADD is not gonna kick in, I swear. All right, just below canvas is backgrounds. So you'll notice there is no screen four, there is no aug screen. Uh, you can have a background and a foreground on all of your uh, regular live screens. An auxiliary screen does not have technical resources. It does not get foregrounds and backgrounds. But you, what you would do is you would come in, you would select uh, one through eight for each screen and you can either make an input the background uh, for a live background if you want, or you upload an image. I don't have any images uploaded, so there's nothing to show. Audio, this is fun because this box has Dante. If you're using a Dante mixer, you can put them both on the same Dante network 
and you don't have to run any DIs out of your computers and, and into your mixer, you can do it all through Dante if you know how to do Dante. I do want to make a video about Dante and using this specifically. So this is where you would set up output one, which would be your HDMI output. Follow audio layer, which means whatever's in layer one or whichever layer you select, whatever's on that layer, that audio is going to go out. Uh, we have one for each of the outputs. You have one for your multi-view as well. You can select your Dante's as well. I want to get all the way down to line out. Line out can do the same thing. You can have it follow screen and you tell it which screen you want it to follow. You can have, you can do direct routing where one specific input just goes straight out and you can make customs. Uh, I typically, in times I've used this box and I've done audio, I tell it to follow the screen and I tell it to follow screen one. I do that because screen one is my primary projector screen and I just want whatever is live on that. If that presentation has audio, boom, it's going to be there. I just tell the audio guy to unmute the PC line. That's all we have to deal with. Next, we're going to do quick preset. Now, if you have used the last generation of the Midras, uh, not the 4K Midras, the older ones. So the Quick View, the Pulse 2, it had a button called Quick Frame or Quick View. That was the name of the box. There was a Quick View button. We refer to it as the Oh Shit button. You could upload an image, and if anything went wonky, you just tap the button real quick, figure out what was actually going on, fix it, tap the button again, and essentially what it's doing is it's, it's just throwing an image up to cover whatever's going wonky, and then it pulls it back down. Press the button, it goes up, press the button again, it goes down. This is not that. It's similar, but it ain't it. You have a couple different settings. You can set it to just fade to black if you press the button. You can also have it fade to an image in your image library when you press the button you can have it recall the master memory when you press the button. And as you are noticing on here, you can select which screens that affects, and you can also do it on the way in and on the way back. You can control fade times, you can make it a cut, all of those things. It's not a quick cut, cover your butt. It's a little bit different. It can do the same. You can make a companion button to kind of do that as well, but it's not exactly the same. Everybody, thanks for watching. Uh, the next video we're going to do is going to cover all of the other settings that are on that list uh, below pre-config. So uh, that should come out in a couple weeks. We'll see you then.